Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Check the link down below. Use code NERDYCRAFTER14 for 14 free meals and free shipping. Welcome to Crafty Challenges, the show where I set myself very high standards and you as grains get to watch me mess up for your own entertainment. Today we're going to be doing a craft challenge with my own craft kit. Yep, my own craft kit. What's going to make this craft challenge interesting is I'm going to try two different styles of sculpting. <laughs> Well, that's a big fat lie. I didn't know that at the time, but I was definitely lying. Normally, I'm the kind of person who loves doing creatures of darkness and doing absolutely adorable and cute things is not quite my forte. I mean, I try to make cute things, but I don't always succeed. So I'm going to try and make a cute character with this box. But on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and indulge myself and make a character that is really more of my type, which is foresty and fantasy. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you more of a cute type character or are you more of a darkness creature character? And of course, you're allowed to be both. Before we continue, shameless plug. In case you didn't know, my own craft kit is called Not Another Crap Kit, and it comes with everything you need except batteries to get you started on your own sculpting journey, which means that in this box, you get a mold that looks like this, that you can create a figurine that looks like that, and then you can customize it in so many different ways. And the awesome thing about this mold is that it is hand sculpted by me. There are so many exclusives in this kit. If you're interested in watching the unboxing video, I will link it down below. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. I do wave sharp pointy things, but only if you don't listen. So make sure that you do listen. Make sure you click on all notifications while you're there. So first things first, we have our trusty working mat. And now everything we need. And of course, cue angelic music. The heart and soul of these projects. And so the first thing we're going to do is put rubber bands around our figurine mold. And by the looks of it, this character looks like they're really into some interesting things in bed, I say. And I said it. I totally said it. And now we're going to mix up our plaster. For that, we're going to be using about 200 mils of plaster powder, the permastone like so and now we're going to put it into our container and yes the contain the container is included in the kit the measuring cup is included in the kit the spatula is included everything even the rubber bands are actually included in the kit all right and now we're going to pour the water into the plaster and stir and smush we only have about five minutes and this is probably for me the thing that takes you know <laughs> the a little i guess the thing that you need to work the quickest for. So you have to work very quickly, no diddly dulling and chitty chatties. So don't just stand here and be like, that's some good water because it's going to harden very quickly. I should probably hurry. Now that we have our milky creamy consistency like so, I'm going to just do one more tour to make sure we didn't miss any lumpy clumpies. Very nice. We have our mold. And overwhelmingly in the previous video, many of you grains requested that we add a funnel in the kit. So yes, I've been listening. We have been listening. So here's a funnel for those of you who don't necessarily want to actually pour it directly from the container like me. And now with your container in one hand and the funnel, make sure that you do hold it. Don't let it loosey goosey and don't try to jam it in there because you need to remove it. Go ahead and pour. Let it flow. That's it. And just keep going. Nice, even flow. Try not to fill the entire thing. You want a nice flow. Don't do like glug glug like I did. There we go. So far, so good. I'm going to check. Still good. So far, so good. Do a quick check. Still good. And we are right on. Let's check. Beautiful. Look at that. Right to the top. But we need to get the air pockets out. So we're just going to vibrate the mat. There, that's a lot of air pockets, so just vibrate a little bit and fill it up a little bit more. At this point, you can definitely use your popsicle sticks to get a little bit more in there, but our spatula is doing a pretty good job. And then vibrate again, and it's looking good. Let's wait half an hour to 40 minutes. Eventually. So according to our piece here, let's listen to that. Our plaster in here should be ready, but hang on, let's let's just take a few more moments to appreciate some crunch crunch. Mm. 
I don't know why this always gets me. And now it's time to unmold this. I don't know if the word is unmold or demold, but let's just go ahead with unmold because it sounds like undressing. Cue smexy music. Oh yeah, you like that, don't you? We're gonna remove each rubber band very slowly. And this part is always my favorite. You never know where your air pockets are going to be. These are not air pockets. These are actually the holes for the tail and the wires for the wings that I purposefully made as I made this mold. And we wiggle the hand right out and voila, there we go. And we have quite a big air pocket here, but that's okay, nothing a little clay can't fix. So basically for this next part, I'm just going to take my sharp pointy thing and my sanding tool in order to make the figure as smooth as I want it to be. So here's our little dude and I think the design concept before we start is definitely going to have to be something either pastel-y or colorful and cute. I might actually have a rainbow. Here's a rainbow. Here's Mariah Elizabeth. I feel like if they were on a scale of most rainbowy, I think Mariah is probably more rainbowy than a rainbow. So we're gonna take these two and mash them together. Okay, all right, all right then. So that's a lot of pressure on myself. <laughs> I'm really bad at drawing, so don't judge me. Stop, stop. Before I show you my drawing, promise you're not gonna laugh. Just at least try to promise. Good enough. Before we go on, let's talk about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. For those of you who don't know HelloFresh, they are a meal kit delivery service that gets mouth-watering recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. HelloFresh makes cooking and meal planning way easier. I'm usually really picky when it comes to foods, but HelloFresh did not disappoint. They have so many recipes to choose from. Whether you're into carb smart, vegetarian, or low cal, they have you covered. So it goes without saying that they are flexible to fit your lifestyle. So whether you want to add extra lunches or dinners, or more protein, or even want to change your delivery dates, HelloFresh makes it really easy for you. So it goes without saying that sustainability is a huge part of HelloFresh. Everything is pre-portioned and comes in packages and it, it's not confusing. You know what goes with what. And since everything is pre-measured, it means that we are making less waste. That's something I appreciate. You know what? Let's make some food. Loaded boneless beef burger. And poof, magic. Time to season the meat. Worcestershire, Worcestershire shots. <laughs> Lettuce bedding seasoning and poof. And here it is. I'm really excited because I've never tried Worcestershire sauce <laughs> inside my actual beef patty. So let's see how that tastes. I also love how even the pickles are included. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. And oh yeah. Oh, that's satisfying. Get your own. So what are you waiting for? Check the link down below and use the code NERDYCRAFTER14 to get 14 free meals, including shipping, delivered right to your door. Thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and being huge supporters of this channel. The idea I had in my mind is maybe a furry type of creature, kind of something a little bit like this. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to respect that look because sometimes I just let my imagination take over. But without further delay, since I already know that I want to have a tail, I went ahead and took my epoxy sculpt, which is a part A and part B. You mix it all together and it becomes rock hard solid. It's a non-bakeable clay. And I really don't need much. And as you can see, the best way to do that is take a little bit, put it into the hole, and then put the wire right on the inside. And to make sure that the wire is stronger, I did twist it with my own hands. If needed, go ahead and put just a little bit of water on your fingers. You don't have to use a spritzer. I just happen to have one nearby. Spritz a little bit of water or dip your fingers in a little bit of water and smooth it out with water. No matter what you do, do not touch it. So if you're going to sculpt with the rest of the body, don't touch this part for at least, I would say, half an hour to an hour. Otherwise, it's going to move. So there we go. I went ahead and took my liquid Sculpey, which is the bake clay, the uh, liquid clay, basically, in order to block out the pieces that I wanted and fill in some gaps here and there. Because sometimes the hardest part when you're not used to something is basically to, you know, just block the shapes. Gotta keep smoothing. And smoothing. And smoothing! I know it's looking a little bit ducky here, but don't worry, this is not Georgie the pineapple duck. As cute as he is, it is not Georgie. Georgie, get out of here. Wow, the attitude on this one. Georgie, mind your business. Mind your business. Fine, I'm gonna go tell on you. I don't care. I'm not scared. 
but it's going to change from ducky look to a little bit more furry as I'm blocking in more sections that are going to have fur type kind of flowy texture, at least I'm hoping. And make sure you don't do similar mistakes as I do, which is basically overusing the liquid Sculpey because that's just going to make your surface extra sticky. We like sticky, but not extra sticky. Gotta keep smoothing. And smoothing. And smoothing! Now that our little character has all his fur, I kid you grains not, this has taken me an hour and a half to <laughs> to do this part alone. We're going to roll little triangles, make them a little hollow, add wires into them so that we have some ears. And the reason I put the wires is so that they don't melt or fall or lose integrity when they go into the oven. Now I'm just adding some details to make the facial features a little bit more recognizable. And as you notice for this character, instead of making it looking straight to the front or a little lower, I'm focusing so that it's looking upwards towards us. Oh my god, so far it's it's looking adorable. I am definitely getting moose kind of vibes. That is not what I was going for, but I guess the Canadian in me thought that moose are cute. So kind of going with that idea. <laughs> but we're not entirely going moose, okay? Just kind of looks like it. So now that we have the indents for the eyes, I am going to do a little bit of cheating and I have a printout of the eyes. Even though you do have everything you need to paint your own eyes and I have a whole tutorial on how to make the eyes, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. So what we're going to do is use our mold and resin to make the actual glass eye. And then I'm going to take a glue, put it on top of the rainbow eyes. Yes, I want to go with rainbow eyes and put it right on top. Once it's done, we'll just gonna cut it out, place it on our character, and then we don't want it to look freaky. Yes, it looks freaky. And ah yes, after putting all the details, it's starting to look a lot cuter and a lot less, um, scary. Now just adding the final touches and details on the head and patching up any holes that I don't want on there. And here it is. I know I haven't put the tail yet, but I'm gonna put that after baking. So it means I'm gonna bake it twice. But in order to do that, first we need to put our hands together and pray to the baking gods because they're very vengeful. <clears throat> Dear baking gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff. And so, cue angelic music. The baking gods have not forsaken us. I'm actually pretty happy that the ears didn't fall off, but let's not jinx ourselves. Don't put that energy out there. And so the next step I needed to do is the poofy tail. For that, I definitely didn't need that much of the wire. I went ahead and added foil paper to add a little bit of bulk, and then added more clay right on top, and added some texture. I really can't get over the fact that it really does look like a moose. Now that it's baked, time for the fun part, which is painting. We're going to get out the exclusive Nerdy Crafter pack, which has basically all of my favorite colors. And I wanted the top to be a somewhat plain color because we're going to go really crazy at the bottom. But before we get onto that, this is the color that I chose. I love this deep blue. Listen. I know what purple is, and I know what blue is, but for some reason I chose to say blue. Get this, let's, let's, let's just move on from that. And yes, calm down, calm down. I did say we're gonna get rainbows, and here's where it comes in. The entire bottom part of this character is going to be painted in the same style as M.P. Gauterin from Instagram. I absolutely love this artist's style, which is super colorful and dotted. At first I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured, hey, let's go with it and try something new. It's definitely way out of my comfort zone. So as I'm finishing up and putting the final touches of dry brushing with a little bit of gold everywhere, I realized that the eyes were a little foggy, probably my hands got a little dirty and I touched it, so I put some UV resin on top and hardened it. And er, me, good. Here it is all done. Holy carp. The amount of time that this sculpture took was way more than I expected. The fur, I don't recommend doing fur if you're in a hurry. Take your time with it. This style of painting, don't do it if you're in a hurry. Th the painting alone took me approximately four hours. So putting it out there, just putting it out there. But I absolutely love the fact that the top is a solid dark color and then the bottom is kind of like a party. I definitely think this is a type of cute creature, but it does have some dark elements to it, but it has like a gentle soul. I mean, the eyes are very gentle. They look very sweet. 
Now, I know I promised you grains that I would do a second character, but as many of you may or may not know based on this video here, I did have a procedure done recently and I can't sit for long periods of time and I don't want to push myself and injure the progress that I'm making so far. So this second character is going to have to wait for another video. Don't forget, for those of you interested in getting the Not Another Crap Kit, which is basically what we used to make this character, check in the description box below and find the link and you will also find it as the pinned comment. If you want to watch more crafty videos, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch me tattooing for the first time, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.